Hello and good Monday, January 29th, 2007. I'm Joanne and this is Rocket Boom. What was once Silicon Valley has now moved south to LA. In its place, a lustrous silvery grey metal. Halfium, natural occurring chemical number 72 on the periodic table of elements, allows for even thinner systems in which light can travel for the faster switching of ones and zeros. For you and me, this basically translates to using the impurity in zirconium to get 45 nanometer processor samples with up to 820 million transistors for quad core variants in the next couple of years. Wow, it looks like IBM and AMD are announcing a new processor chip today as well. One that they say uses halfium instead of silicon. A lustrous silvery gray metal. Halfium, natural occurring chemical number 72 on the periodic table of elements, allows for even thinner systems in which light can travel for the faster switching of ones and zeros. Hmm, is this the next thing in the 3D viewing experience? Or what? This prototype may only have a few pixels of movement now, but pack in a few hundred million transistor controller pairs. Well, now then we'd be talking. In South Korea, where technology is so high, Cell phone and internet infrastructures are cutting edge and fast speeds are on the up and up. It's a monoculture. That is to say, 99.9% .9 of all computer users in South Korea are on Microsoft Windows operating systems. And at what cost? Well, the cost of stereo culture, naturally. When everyone uses the same system, if the system becomes vulnerable, the whole entire system crashes. Reminds me of dumb full-bred dogs versus smart mutts. Brian Martin writes in, I happened to see this online after reading about the story today in the Sunday edition of the Sacramento Bee. It's about a doctoral student at UC Davis that uses maggots to paint pictures. It looks right up your alley as a story for Rocket Boom. Gee, thanks a lot, Brian. Painting maggots are right up our alley. I am a PhD student in the Department of Entomology at UC Davis. Um, finishing up my PhD hopefully sometime this year. And I work with maggots. So the basic um, ingredients in maggot art are maggots, paint, and paper. So we use forceps to pick up the maggots and put them in paint. There's a lot of thought that goes into not only the colors of the paper and the paint, but um, the consistency of the paint. You can see from the trails that are being left, the consistency is just right so that the maggot never actually runs out of paint before it gets to the edge of the page. And right there you can see he's starting to run out of paint. And as he's planting his hind end down, he makes a little railroad tracking pattern. In sports, it's the Line Rider Urban Run. Now that Line Rider has an eraser, a zoom tool, and a few other handy features, we've been seeing an explosion in growth of LRHUR, Line Rider hourly usage rates. And now, let's go to Washington, D.C., where Andy Carvin picked up the inside scoop on the National Iraq War protest, United for Peace. Andy? Right now I'm in Washington, D.C. at the National Mall where thousands of protesters from around the country are converging to protest against President Bush's policies in Iraq. Over the next 10 years, we can let the same amount of Iraqi civilians die and add to them American casualties, or we can pull those Americans out and start focusing on the issues of the Iraqi people. My focus, besides accountability on the war and besides trying to get everybody home, is also now on the veterans. I don't think that we're focusing on the toll that the war is taking when people get, if they're lucky enough to get home. We've lost uh, lives and money and honor. And the American public has said no. Mothers and fathers have lost their children are saying no. The Iraqis are saying you're not welcome. Thank you, Andy. For the full report, go to andycarvin.com. That's some information for today. I'm Joanne, and this is Rocket Boom. <laughs>